Amen, right? Good morning, church. Good morning. It's good to have each and every one of you here this morning. I welcome you all to worship. Those of you who are online, welcome you to worship this morning as well. And those on the radio, it is great to be with you as well. It is delight to have those who are in our sanctuary this morning. And we have a couple special guests that we want to introduce at this time of the service. And uh, that would be Pastor Michael and his wife, Rachel, and the family they have. We'd like, uh, Pastor Michael, you can come up front. They don't all have to come up front, but uh, they're all welcome to come up front. But I know it's uh, a crew that you have. Uh, so I'm just going to uh, let the congregation welcome Pastor Michael to our church. You, let you say a word or two to the congregation uh, and point out your wife back there. And I will. Good morning, church. It's 
great to see you all. You know, one of the rules I've always heard is never hand a pastor a microphone, especially when you got two of them in the same room. That could take a while, so. Well, I'm very <laughs> careful about the retirees. <laughs> Uh, but I am Michael Slininger, and as many of you know, we are excited to start here May 1st, and uh, Barry was kind enough to invite us as guests to join in worship and get to uh, be kind of covert op agents or spies to watch out on all of you as we get started. Uh, it's my wife, Rachel, back there, and uh, we have two very little ones uh, with us, um, and then we have Owen. Owen was adopted when he was born, so he's been ours from the very beginning, and the two are staying with us, and we'll see what God has in store in their story. So um, that's kind of us in a nutshell. So we are very, very excited. A few have asked if we've started packing. I think I have three boxes, and that's about it so far. Um, so we got plenty to go. Um, we will kind of take a slow transition as we move up uh, or up here from Cherokee. Um, fortunately, we do own our house, so we can take a little bit of time. We don't have to leave because another pastor is uh, taking over. So, But uh, we're hoping by uh, this summer that we'll be up here permanently and with you all and sharing in your community. So uh, as uh, we ask, invite you for our prayer or prayers for us as we transition, and we offer prayers for you as we uh, welcome as a, as a shepherding family um, that we would walk with you, that you would walk with us, and we would see... Um, what God has in store and great celebrations uh, as we celebrate together. We have uh, a symbolic uh, gesture to give to you. Uh, we have t-shirts. One for Owen and then there's two for you and at some point, you can go back to the table back there and talk with them about what sizes and what you want, et cetera. But these are symbolic, except for Owens. He can put that on anytime he wants to. All right, blessings and welcome. A lot's been going on in our lives. Um, do we have, just out of curiosity, you know, we come to joys and concerns later in the church service. I'm just curious if we have any uh, Iowa State fans here. Oh, I just check it. Because that, that was a glorious game uh, of the men. So I just thought I'd uh, have a shout out since uh, I live down in that other city, that other school. And, uh, you know, I talk about it enough. I just wanted to make sure that half my family goes to Iowa State, and, you know, it's really kind of cool to, to watch those kind of things and enjoy uh, those kind of games. So blessings. And uh, we'll come back to that at Joys and Concerns because uh, there are other things that we want to lift up later in the service. But uh, we are uh, aware that we carry with us a lot of stuff. And so as we begin worship, we come to God and we uh, approach God, and we say, here we are, Lord. With all my stuff, here we are, Lord. I'm going to set it down just a little bit during this hour so that, uh, God, you and I can have a conversation and we can have a time together. So I encourage you to do the same. Just set aside all those worries and those concerns just for this hour. And uh, let's breathe in the grace of God this morning. Let's breathe in God's presence and breathe out our concerns and worries to the Lord. Take a couple more deep breaths. God is here, and God is ready to bless you in this service. Pray with me, please. Lord God, come and bless us in this time. As we set aside our worries for the moment, we know we'll probably pick them up as we leave. But in this time, we want to center on you, our Lord, our Savior. Help us be inspired today by music, by the people around us, by your word that is spoken, challenge us and encourage us. We're here for you, Lord. And we know, Lord, that you're here for us. Bless this time. In the name of Christ, we humbly pray. Amen. As you are able, I encourage you to stand and join with me in our morning's call to worship. The journey of Lent continues with the journey of sacrifice. We are here all the time to give our lives to God. 
We are called upon to give of ourselves to others. Be with us this day and walk with us on this journey. Please join with me in our opening prayer. Compassionate Lord, forgive us when we falter on this Lenten pathway, when the road seems too uncertain and we are afraid. We admit that following Jesus is not an easy task. Jesus requires us to be willing to make the ultimate commitment full wise. And we hesitate and hold back. Draw us back to you, Lord. Give us confidence and courage to face the future with hope. Let us place our trust in you that the message of peace and mercy you have given to us through Jesus Christ may be offered to others through our own witness to your healing mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to sing out of the little black uh, book, uh, so you might grab a copy of it, uh, and we're going to sing together, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus. I'd like to invite all the young disciples to come forward. Have any of you noticed anything outdoors lately? that's a little different than it's been for all winter long. Just curious. There's what on the windows? That brown stuff on the windows? I hadn't noticed any brown stuff on the windows. I was thinking about outside. You know, and, and have you seen anything happen outside? Eli, have you seen anything outside? Snow, no, none of that stuff. Grass, is it changing color yet? Is it brown or is it green? It's starting to turn green, isn't it? Have you seen any buds on any of the trees yet? You saw a worm. Oh my goodness, a worm, folks. What are we gonna do? We've got a worm outdoors. That's where they belong. How about flowers? Have you seen any flowers? No. Have you planted anything yet? You planted something? What'd you plant? Some vegetables already? You planted vegetables already? In the house. Okay, getting ready to put them outdoors. I should ask uh, John Cotton, who loves to, to plant flowers, if there's anything happening outdoors yet. Nothing yet. 
Well, are you getting ready? All right, you watered the trees. Well, my wife got some marigolds, all right? And she also got these uh, impatience, all right? Impatience, perfect name of a flower for little kids. <laughs> Amen? And I want you to see these. Look at these. Just, just, I'm going to pour a little of these out in my hand. Can you see these? You got to stand up. Don't touch because they'll go everywhere. Look at those. Look at those. Those look weird. What are they? They're seeds. And just, nope, no, you can't have the bag because these are my wife's. Uh, <laughs> I gotta give them back. She just let me use them for Sunday because she wants to go ahead and put the rest of them in the ground. And she put some in a, in a pot in the house just like uh, you did with the vegetables to get them ready to get going, you know, so that we could put them outdoors when it was better weather. But you know, when Good Friday comes around, what's the old wives' tale, the folklore? You gotta plant your potatoes. And that's only a week away. Week, two weeks away, actually. It's coming. And today in our scripture, we hear about a kernel of wheat. And in order for these to grow, and all the farmers here know this, you got to take your seeds. They look dormant. They look kind of dead, don't they? And you put them in the... And God has a miracle that occurs because they germinate, they start to grow, and then something pops up out of the dirt, the plant which they are. And eventually they'll bloom, or eventually they'll produce corn, they'll produce soybeans, they'll produce wheat, they'll produce oats, whatever we plant. Because there's a miracle that occurs. From a, a seed like this, can you believe that a plant like this can come out? Huh? Yeah, and just imagine you guys, what you can become when you're older, if you follow Jesus. You're going to be a blessing to the world. You're going to be a gift of love to the world because you have love of Jesus in your hearts. Pray with me, congregation. Dear God, thank you for little seeds that go in the ground and produce beauty, produce food, produce fruit. Thank you for the miracle of growth. In Christ we pray. Amen. And there's another miracle that occurs, and that is these empty buckets get filled every Sunday by our congregation. And we've done this for four weeks to buy books for kids. All right? We have books for kids. Here they come. Congregation, just so you know, you've done very well in these four weeks. Our goal is $1,500, and we have raised so far $969.37. All right. We have today and next Sunday to finish up. And uh, so we're going to buy books for all the kids in second grade going into third grade in our elementary school in our city so that they can have a gift of books as they go uh, on summer break and uh, their reading level will not decline but will be maintained and will even improve over the summer. That's our goal. Anything we can do to help those kids because at age, at grade three, if you're at reading level, you have a, a lot better chance of succeeding in life than if you don't. And we want all of our kids in our community to succeed, amen? amen. We want them to thrive. Just like we want all the churches in town to thrive and our church herself to thrive. We want our lives to be honoring God 
and the love of God is coming out in coins, and uh, the kids are gathering them. Thank you, congregation. And just so everybody sees, Barry's returning the seeds <laughs> to Kay. You know where they go, guys. We put them on the altar as a gift to God and a gift for all those kids in our community. And someone might need to help our shortest person. Good job. Good job. Thank you all. And if you'd like a treat before you go to the nursery, uh, you can do that. We have a special... Uh, presentation from the foundation uh, chairperson. Mike is going to share that with us now. Good morning. I always wondered what the treat box looked like, so now I finally can see what's all in there. Um, I'm here this morning as the chairperson of your Grace United Methodist Church Foundation. This isn't my first time giving a report to the congregation, so it's a little easier since I've done it before, um, and I had some notes from the past. So um, I wasn't part of the discussions or the meetings back in 1991 when the foundation was established. However, all the folks that were, no doubt, had uh, three things that they were thinking about uh, that was imperative for establishing and moving the foundation forward with plan giving. That being to communicate, celebrate, and educate. And I'm here this morning to present or communicate an annual report of the status and workings of the foundation. I've been a board member on the foundation since 2013, and I wish to thank all the members of our foundation board for their dedication to the principles that govern us and their commitment to being faithful stewards of the legacies entrusted to us. At our recent charge conference on February 26th, four new board members were appointed to the foundation board. We are pleased to announce the following appointments of Ben Pullen, Vernon Olson, John Cotton, and Kristen Schwenniker. Your other at-large existing board members include Sue Burdick, James Cullen, Glenn Chennall, Allison Herman, and myself. Also serving as ex officio members are Church Council Chair Judith Olson, Gary Small, Trustee Chair, Paul Castle, Finance Chair, and currently uh, Reverend Dr. Barry Tridel as our senior pastor. At a recent uh, meeting of the Foundation Board on February 18th, I was nominated as chairperson and Allison Herman uh, as secretary treasurer, and we both accepted. At our annual meeting on February 27th, Kristen Schwenniker was nominated as vice chair and she accepted as well. A special thank you to Allison Herman, who we can't thank enough for all her hard work with preparing our reports and double checking the numbers, and because there's a lot of numbers, and we thank her for that. I'd like to thank Bree for also helping get um, our brochures printed out. And we handed them out today, and we didn't, I didn't have you print enough, of course. So, uh, she likes to see people in her office during the week, so uh, she's going to print some more out. She doesn't know it yet, but she's going to print some more out, and if you didn't get one, you can stop and get one from her. As a refresher for some of you and for those of you who may not know, our foundation was established in 1991 when Pastor Dick Pearson was our senior pastor here at Grace United Methodist Church. Authorized by the Charge Conference on December 10th of that year, original members of the foundation included Rick Beam, John Cotton, Gary Holt, Ron Ricketts, and Paul Strout. Articles of Incorporation were filed January 27, 1992 by Mr. Mike Zener. As stated in the Articles of Incorporation, the purpose of the foundation is to acquire, hold, invest, and manage property of any kind on behalf of and for the betterment of and benefit of Grace United Methodist Church in Spencer, Iowa. The foundation shall accept funds of property by gift 
bequest, and donation. These funds shall be separated from all other funds of the church and set aside in accounts as a permanent endowment fund of investments. The principal of this fund shall accrue perpetually, except other, as otherwise no, notated by the bylaws, by the foundation. Distribution of funds from the foundation shall be made uh, as determined from time to time in accordance with the foundation distribution policy. Over the past 31 years, we have accumulated gifts totaling just over $1.3 million. In his letters to the early Christians, the Apostle Paul encouraged us to be generous and cheerful givers. He teaches us to give as we have decided in our heart to give. Moreover, Paul equates giving with thanksgiving. Your foundation's future depends upon the continued generosity of friends such as Lois Adams, Merle and Lorraine Yeager, Hilda Blaybaum, Marvin Cruz, Mildred Wells, Franklin Brucey, Tina Abin, Ben Abin, Helena Green, Edna Lass, Gladys Geek, and George and Joanne Mallory with Coca-Cola stock. Bequest gifts are one of the most important sources of future planning. They help to strengthen our foundation. So today, we celebrate distributions to the Grace United Methodist Church from the foundation, including this year's distribution from the 2023 foundation fund value totals $1,525,826 and some cents. At our annual meeting on February 27th of this year, the foundation board voted to distribute 5% of the assets fair market value, which amounts to $84,233.38. Of that amount, $10,906.91 from the Abin Fund is designated for capital improvements with the Board of Trustees appointed responsibility for the proper use of the income. Separately, $2,500 will be distributed to the Blaybaum Scholarship Committee. And there are some informational packets out there for um, how to apply for those. You most likely heard, maybe it was last Sunday, an announcement uh, regarding a disbursement of these uh, GU, uh, Grace United Methodist Church Foundation funds. The annual distribution is to be used for specific projects that to support the ministries and mission of Grace Church. The four areas of disbursements are global and local missions, capital improvements, outreach and emerging ministries, and educational opportunities. Please make yourself aware of the important dates as it relates to the applications for foundation funds for this year. And lastly, we communicate, we celebrate, we cannot forget to educate. As I mentioned a couple years ago, as a board, we agreed to do a better job in this area of spreading the gospel of plan giving. Plan giving is a very complex topic. We can't assume that everyone automatically knows what it is. How do we accomplish this? We can help you possibly by providing a special program, maybe a presentation, maybe a workshop, maybe a seminar, in hopes of educating you about estate planning and gift planning opportunities. The number one reason people do not leave a bequest or other type of plan gift to the church is they're never asked. We have some foundation informational flyers that we handed out today. Bree will have more in the office that summarize our purpose, our responsibilities, and policies that we follow. Um, of course, if you have any questions, any one of us on the board would be happy to answer those for you. Thank you.
Today's scripture is from John 12, 20 through 33. And in the Pew Bible, it's 16, uh, 38. Jesus predicts his death. Now there were some Greeks among those who went out to worship at the festival, and they came to Philip, who was from the Sheba, the Sheda in Galilee with a request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew. Andrew and Philip in turn told Jesus. Jesus replied, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Anyone who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves, we must follow me. Where I am, my servant also will be. My Father will honor the one who serves me. Now my soul is troubled. What shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd that was there and heard it said that it thundered. Others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus said, this voice was for your benefit, not mine. This is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. It's interesting as you uh, hear that scripture for the tenth time or so. I've been studying it, thinking about it, praying about it, and uh, it's an interesting scripture because it's not one that I've ever preached on before. Uh, it's in the lectionary, and it's a it's a, a pivotal verse. If you understand the Gospel of John, uh, the first twelve chapters after the introduction, the first twelve chapters are all about the signs and wonders. There are seven signs and wonders that John recites in the first book, part of the book of John. And that's through verse 12, uh, chapter 12, I mean. And then we get to this particular verse. This particular verse where the Greeks approach Jesus. And that's the end of the first half of the Gospel of John. And then we have the beginning of the second part of the Gospel of John. And the second part of the Gospel of John is the glorification of Jesus. It's the glorification. It's the book of glory. The first is the book of signs. And then at the very end, we have, of course, a conclusion. And that's your book of John. We're right in the middle. Right in the middle, where we have this saying about a kernel of wheat or a grain of wheat. We have this episode where the Greeks come and visit. And it's a pivotal moment because the Greeks hadn't approached Jesus and the Greeks are symbols of people outside of Jerusalem. They're symbols of people who have traveled into the Passover. People who have heard about Judaism and have converted to Judaism out there. And they have traveled in. It parallels the latter part of it where Jesus is lifted up and all people will be drawn to Jesus. You see how that kind of connects from the, the book of signs to the book of glory? And in this middle part, we have this parable about a seed. We have a parable about a seed and all of us have probably planted something in our lives. If you have ever planted anything in your life, put your hands up. All right. Those of you who have not, 
we invite you to try that. Go buy some seeds, put it in the ground, and see what happens. Tend to it appropriately, but take the time to do it. Most of us got a chance when we were kids to do that in school, where we got a styrofoam cup with a little dirt in it, and we put some seeds in it, right? Do you remember doing that? And it's all about learning the process of growth. From the seed will come the harvest. We know those stories because we hear them in the Bible about Jesus talking about the parable of the sower who goes out and sows the seed. And some will land on the good ground, and some will land on the rocky ground, and some will land on the thistles. We know that story. And we know the bottom line is, is that God is the one who carries the seed to the harvest. It's not you and me, but we tend to the garden. We take care of the garden. And as my grandma would do, is she would stoop down and pull all those weeds. Every once in a while, you could just see this small little lady bent over pulling weeds. And of course, when I was a kid, I got to go out and pick the weeds out of the beans. Oh, I was so privileged to go walk beans when I was a kid. One summer, I actually walked 40 acres of beans all by myself because I wanted to earn a little bit of money for a bicycle. You see, we know in this kind of culture where we live right now what it means to put a seed in the ground. And so when we hear this story of this little itty-bitty seed, which is supposed to be wheat, by the way. Has anyone here ever planted wheat? I didn't think so. Oats? They're pretty similar in some ways. In fact, I was trying to find some wheat seeds, and I actually had a little help people looking for them. I haven't found any in this area, because it's not a crop that we plant. I would have had to order it online and then what would I was going to do with it? Give it to the kids, right? And then they'd plant it and it wouldn't grow real well. That would be a bad illustration, right? But here we grow, what's the number one crop? Corn, number two? And number three? Sweet corn. <laughs> oh, just teasing. <laughs> we do have a lot of oat fields around us, but not very many. And if you go out west a little bit, you'll find the wheat fields. If you go out west a little bit, you'll also find sunflower seeds and fields of sunflowers. Just amazing. What God can do with a little seed. It has to die, go down in the dirt before it can rise to new life. If you look at this passage, there are layers upon layers upon layers of interpretations. But let's just try it a little bit. Let's just think about it a little bit. Jesus has to die for there to be life. And this is the beginning of the predictions of Jesus' death, the foretelling of Jesus' death. It's the beginning of the looking towards Jerusalem. And next week we, we approach Jerusalem and we enter Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. But as we think about it, the seed has to go in the ground. And that is symbolic of an ending. So there can be a beginning. If we think about it in those terms, and we start thinking about what has to end and what has to begin, I have a few notes about that. Life has to end so there can be a new beginning, right? There's death and then there's new beginning. You know, we can simply put it this way, there has to be an ending for a new beginning. There has to be and unfortunately, these words are true for us. There is often in this world a system of negative things. That when those negative things happen, we all groan. But yet, when they happen and through Jesus Christ, if he truly is the one who dies and rises to new life, then that means that 
they have overcome the system of this world. Now, check the, check the book out, read it again, the lesson, and see where the ruler of this world is deposed. Okay? And this world is being challenged. So think about this world as the systems of this world that are being challenged by the new order that is coming the way of Jesus Christ. It's the system of this world, the system of corruption, the system of violence, the system of retribution. Now think about the, all that happened to Jesus and start naming those things. The system of brokenness, the darkness, self-serving power, violence, fear, punishment, all of these things. That system in our world. You know what I'm talking about, it, don't you? The system of our world that has all of that. We've run into it a few times, haven't we, in our lives? Can I have an amen? We've experienced some of the negativity of the world, and Jesus experienced it in the Romans. Jesus experienced it in the Pharisees, in the scribes. Jesus experienced it in the people that rejected him, turned on him. The system of the world... But Jesus says that system does not have to control us. And he offered a different option. Now let's take a look at the cross for a moment. We have crosses that have Jesus hanging on them. We know brothers and sisters who are Catholic and they have, uh, they have the crucifix. And we have crosses that are empty. We need both of those to understand that the system, this world, is a system of retribution and pain and punishment and the cross is a symbol of death. But in Jesus' system that turns it all upside down, the cross is a symbol of resurrection and the cross is a symbol of victory over death. The gift of love instead of hate. The gift of peace instead of pain. As you think about it, the gift of life, of new beginning, of joy, of love, of grace, of light instead of darkness. The vine that connects us together instead of brokenness. Peace instead of fear. Forgiveness instead of punishment. Open to all, given to one. That's the cross of this world. The cross of Jesus. The turning it upside down. And here we have, right in the middle of John, the pivotal verse where the Greeks are coming, they're introduced by Andrew to Peter, and then Peter and Andrew go to Jesus with them and introduce them to Jesus. We've got this people coming to Jesus from outside of the community, the Gentiles. And as the cross is lifted up, not the cross lifted up of society, but the cross of Christ that's lifted up that overcomes the powers of this world. In fact, the ruler of this world, you might name as Satan, you might name as the powers that be in society, the people who are, are crushing everybody, the power of Jesus overcomes those and transforms the world. One heart and one life at a time. Here we are as a church, as we step back from the lectionary and we step back from the lesson and we say, what are we doing as a church? As a church, have we embraced this gift of love, of grace? Have we embraced the joy of the relationship we have with God? Because that's the affection of our heart pointed towards God. Right, Roger? It is the embracement of who Jesus is and what he did to challenge the systems of this world that is all about anger, hate, violence. In fact, there's a myth of restorative violence that people even place on the cross. But the truth is, Jesus sacrificed himself out of love. He came, God came, he loved the whole world. And so on the cross, he sacrifices himself so that all of us might be a part of this system, 
the system of the way of Jesus Christ, that we might follow Jesus and find a new way of living and that turn against the kind of life that the world demands and live a life of kindness, of grace, of peace, of forgiveness, of hope, of love, of joy. All the fruits of the Spirit might come alive in us. And as a church, we've experienced the brokenness. We've experienced the hate. We've experienced some difficulties in our own church. And we've gotten past those and we've begun to embrace the Christ who is the one who rises from the dead and gives hope to everyone in the world. Hallelujah, amen? I'm ready for Easter, I don't know about you, but I gotta go through Palm Sunday and I gotta go through the difficult path that Jesus has and I gotta go with him. See, that's part of it. If I'm going to follow Jesus, i got to follow him all the way to the cross. And i got to give of myself to other people. And i got to share my own love and my own compassion with other people as Jesus did. i got to live like Jesus. That's the hard part. Oh, is that the hard part? Because many of us would just like to give assent to a few little things that people say I ought to believe and, and nod and say, hey, I've done my duty. But the reality is I've got to give up this system of hate and violence. I've got to give up this system of retributive justice. I've got to give up this system of hurting people and embrace the one that loves people. Hallelujah. And I've got to follow him. I gotta follow him all the way to the cross. I gotta deny myself if myself means this system. Got that? I gotta deny myself. I gotta deny my choices if it's this system. And embrace God's will, which is this system of grace for all. Amen. Grace for all. When I first looked at this passage, I was going, how in the world do I help anybody understand this passage? And then it hit me. Jesus is throwing the world upside down by sacrificing himself, showing us God's love, and offering a new way to live in the world. And saying no. No to death. No to violence, no to hatred, no to shooting other people, no to the wars, no to all the systems of this world that run over people. I'm so glad to be a part of a church that wants to open their arms as Jesus did on the cross. And I choose to follow him. Amen? And I think you do too. And I have an, if, an invitation to you today. Simple invitation. This last year it's been very difficult to have membership classes and people joining the church. But next Sunday we have two confirmands. They're going to join the church. And I have a couple other people who are very, very interested in joining the church. So, on Wednesday this week, I invite anybody who's interested in joining the church to come to Wednesday night supper, to go sit at a table with me and the others, to talk about what it means to be a member, and then after we confirm all those kids, both of them, then we'll take in other new members into our church. And if you're one of those persons, you're welcome to come on Wednesday night, meet with me, talk about what it means, see if you really want to do it, and then step up and say, I want to follow Jesus. And I want to do it at Grace United Methodist Church as a member. That's my invitation. Those of you who are already members, on that Sunday, you'll get the opportunity to renew your vows as members of the church. And say, I want to follow Jesus, and I want to do it through the life of Grace United Methodist Church. And we will celebrate. We'll celebrate those two young men who are leading the way for the rest of us. Amen? And 
Maybe we'll have two or three or four or five other people. We'll see. God's at work. And I tell you, the most important thing in my life is joining God in what God is doing. I don't want to be a part of this system. I want to join God in this system. And I want to follow Jesus. And I invite you too to do that along with me. Pray with me, please. Almighty God, we thank you for that little grain of wheat that had to die and go into the ground and then produce food for the world. May the systems of this world end in a way that we have new life in the world. Can there be an end to hatred? Can there be an end to violence, to brokenness and to pain, to frustration, to domination, to selfness, selfishness, to power seizing all the things that hurt people in this world. And may we rise with you, Jesus Christ, and embrace your system as we follow you. Follow you into Jerusalem, follow you to your death, and follow you into new life through the resurrection. Help us realize this parable is so true for us as well, not just for others, but for ourselves. As we deny ourselves, the one that belongs to the system of the world, and embrace the new life that comes in you. May we truly be followers of your way, your love, your compassion, your sacrifice, your service, your joy, your love for all. In the name of Christ we pray. As we uh, respond to the word, our uh, finance committee will be meeting a little bit later uh, today uh, for conversation about our budget. Uh, we heard really great news about our foundation, and I just want you to know that the foundation money is not for budgeted items, okay? And therefore, we still have to support our budget. And uh, we took a little dip during the last month. There have been a few people who are missing church, and there have been people who have and been down south and all kinds of things and, and giving is a little low uh, during the month of February and March we're, we're coming towards Easter we're going to be going back strong I know we are uh, but uh, you know it's one of those things that we have to watch all the time uh, because money from foundation is wonderful it helps us in a lot of ways uh, to extend the ministry of Christ in this community but we still have to pay for the power we still have to pay for the salaries we still have to pay for the, the things that are ordinarily go on, and that's our budget. So please, uh, make it a priority to catch up if you're behind. Make it a priority to give a little extra if you ever have a, a blessing in your life. Pass it on so that the church may continue to serve you and be in this world as an ambassador of grace. Thank you, folks. Ushers, please wait upon us for our morning's offerings and tithes. darkness we were waiting without hope without light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt Praise the Son, praise the 
To reveal the kingdom coming and to reconcile the lost, to redeem the whole creation, you did not despise the cross. For even in your suffering, you saw to the other side, knowing this was our salvation, Jesus for our sake you died. the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. The storm was moved for good, for the Lamb had conquered death, and the dead rose from their tombs, and the angels stood in awe, for the souls of all who'd come to the Father are restored. And the church of Christ was born, then the Spirit lit the flame. Now this gospel truth of old shall not kneel, shall not faint. By his blood and in his name, in his freedom I am free. For the love of Jesus Christ, who has resurrected me. Sings flow, praise God, all creatures here below. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise God, the source of all our gifts. Praise Jesus Christ, whose power uplifts. Praise the Spirit. Almighty God, we thank you for the many ways in which you have blessed our lives. Out of love for you, O Lord, we offer these, our tithes, our offerings, and our gifts, and also these coins for books. Take them all, O Lord, 
multiply them, bless them, use them for your purposes, for your glory. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Please turn to your neighbors and greet each other with the love of Christ. Let's go ahead and find our seats before church is over here. <laughs> we need to pray a little bit. All right. And then we need to be sent out with a little bit of enthusiasm yet. Come on. All right. We do have some joys and we do have some concerns. And um, let's start with a couple joys. Um, there is Bob. Where are you at? Back there in the back. Would you stand? Does he hear me? Bob, could you just stand up so we see you over there? <laughs> now, this is a testimony. He came to me and he said, today is my anniversary, our anniversary, he said, 73 years. Whoa! <laughs> so as a church, we want to wish you and your wife so you take this from the church back to your wife. We love you all. We want to wish you happy anniversary, okay? Happy anniversary. All right. Kay and I'll be at 45 when we look at that. 73, wow. That's all I'm going to say is wow. Wow. Um, that's, uh, that's amazing. Um, we have a little thank you card. Uh, missions group has a thank you card for some donation that we gave from the, the church, on behalf of the church, to uh, Pamela. Uh, and I do not know how to pronounce Pamela's last name, but uh, she's from Africa, and she got a gift from us as she's uh, transitioning from school uh, to her work in Ontario. And we tried to help her out. So there's a picture of her, and here's a thank you card from her, and we'll have those posted, and you can read it. Her last name uh, is, can you tell me exactly Woodstock, you're back there, Thorn. Her last name? Okay. <laughs> well, I've seen it different in two places. Ruoa, uh, Rwanda, or Ruoa, or something, and I, I don't know exactly how you pronounce her name. So uh, I just know she's thankful, and one of the pictures, uh, you can see she's really thankful. 
years ago. I uh, just want you to know the church is trying its best to make a difference in people's lives, and we give praise for the mission money that we're able to do those things with that you folks give. Other joys today. It's joy to have our new pastor in our midst. Amen. Amen. All right, Pastor Michael and his lovely wife, Rachel. And I think Owen is back in the... Oh, there, there he is. There's Owen. Good to have Owen with us, too. The others may be back in the nursery. So we're glad to have a nursery. All right. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There you go. He'll be a supporter of the nursery. <laughs> Um, we had uh, one of our, our, our members uh, go to Special Olympics, and uh, Katrina is here someplace. Oh, there she is. How could I miss her? And she has her medal on that she won for cheerleading. So one big cheer for enthusiasm. Hallelujah. Way to go. Yes, Thorne. Uh, Wednesday is Linda's birthday, so we're celebrating. You're having a birthday this week. Uh, you're Linda. happy. She's living back. Linda's hiding from us all. She's back there. <laughs> all right. Any other, are there any other birthdays in our midst? Just checking. Any other birthdays? All right. I'll get right back to that. I had a hand here. All right. Congratulations to the family for the new one. All right. I'll turn to my piano. This is for uh, Linda Whitstruck back there. Anybody else have a birthday this week, last week? We missed you. All right. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Any other joys? Yeah. Barb, your new grandma. Congratulations. Very good. Anyone else have a joy today? Yes? There you go. Isn't that great? Where there are United Methodists, there shall be food. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Any uh, other joys up here? Enjoy. How about concerns? People we want to lift up in our prayers. Concerns. Yes. Sounds like our microphone's not ha behaving well there, but uh, one of your dear friend's mother just passed away, you said. Keep that family in our prayers. Thanks for sharing it with us. Yes? Tinsley will be having chemotherapy on Tuesday, and she's right now fighting off a little bit of a cold, so we're hoping she doesn't develop a fever um, so that she's able to have chemo on Tuesday. All right. Second to the last treatment. Second to the last treatment for Tinsley. Let's keep her in our prayers. We've been praying her all through all of this, so let's keep her in our prayers. A little, uh, just turned three this last week. If she was here, we had to sing to her, but all right. Others, other concerns, yes. Yes, uh, where's Bill? Buster, <laughs> Mayor, you played that part well, and we thank you and the whole crew for uh, uh, Music Man. Uh, it's been a while that I've gone to a play, and uh, it was uh, fun, uh, and we just had a blast, so thank you. Uh, let's remember to say thank you to God for the, for the cyclones and the hot pot. Cyclone men, Hawkeye women, go team. But also, 
We got a gal from Algona that plays for the Hawkeye uh, Cyclone women. Wow, what a player. Uh, she made it to the all team. They didn't quite make it to the finish the championship, but they did really, really well. So we like watching those things. They entertain us, helps us cheer together, unite Iowa together, unless they're playing each other. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anything else you want to lift up today? Prayers. Yeah, our youngest son and family still have employment issues, so let's keep uh, Michael and Kelly in our prayers. A different Michael. But we'll keep this Michael in our prayers as he's getting ready to come, along with his wife, Rachel. Anyone who would like to join me at the railing is welcome to. Let's be in an attitude of prayer. Almighty God, each of us in our own way, bow our heads and lift up our hearts and come to you, O Lord. We give you praise, we give you thanksgiving for all of the wonderful blessings you've given us in our lives. Today, as we celebrate anniversaries and birthdays, as we celebrate new birth of uh, family members, we give you thanks, O God. It's amazing the things that happen in our lives, and we praise you for them. We pray, O Lord, a prayer of Thanksgiving for your grace that comes to people who are hurting and those who are facing treatments, those who are missing loved ones. You know the needs, O oh Lord, better than we do, but out of love, O oh Lord, we've lifted up people to you. We've shared with each other their names, and we lift them each up to you, O oh Lord, and ask, O oh Lord, for your blessings upon their lives. Surround them with your love, encompass them with your healing power, your grace, touch their lives, <coughs> hold them in your love. We pray, O oh Lord, for our world as we think about all of the violence and all the hate and all the brokenness. And we pray, O oh Lord, for your gifts of peace, your gifts of love and grace that come through Jesus Christ, sacrificed for us. May you be lifted up, O oh Lord, and may there be transformation in our world that we might all live in peace. We might all share in the common good for each other. And we may all love as you have loved us. We pray, O oh Lord, for our church and for our community, and we pray for all the churches in our community. And we ask, O oh Lord, for Christ to be lifted up in all the churches, and that there might be transformation in hearts, there may be transformation in our community. And there may be grace for all. These, O oh Lord, are our prayers. We lift them up to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to turn in your hymnal, the little black ones again, to the hymn number 2175, Together We Serve. Remember, in the spirit of Jesus we go forth to serve. Let us stand and sing together. Remembering Jesus in whom 
Remembering love is the strength of our song. Remembering love is the strength of our lives. Remembering love is the strength of our service. Remembering love is the strength of our church. We go forward out into the world to be the church and to do it with enthusiasm. Amen. Wow. 